President Biden announced a major success today in such a way as to hit Donald Trump where it hurts the most, his ego. And it worked so well that even the Fox propaganda network is consistently commenting on Trump's failure in comparison. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, again, the president made a major announcement today with respect to manufacturing jobs, the technology industry, and Microsoft, and he used it to juxtapose his success and the success of his executive and legislative record compared to that of Donald Trump at a time when the American people really need to be reminded of that. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. But first, I want to play this clip from the Fox Propaganda Network. You have father and son here, Steve and Peter Ducey, talking about Trump's failure and Biden's success, and then we'll break it down. So, Peter, this this new AI Microsoft thing, uh, three billion dollars, big job creators, that's in Racine. Isn't that the same town that Foxconn said, I don't know, five, six years ago, we're going to build a big plant and they never did? Yes, and that was a huge Trump announcement back then, and he said that the factory was going to be the eighth wonder of the world, but then Foxconn decided to really scale back their plans, and the land is still available, so Microsoft is going in. So you heard that Donald Trump made a major announcement when he was president about Foxconn, this you know technology company. He was part of Trump's uh, you know, bragging that, you know, he was going to bring manufacturing jobs back to this country and it failed. And Microsoft is stepping in, thanks in large part to President Biden. So, again, we're going to play some more clips. But just for context, Biden hits Trump with major Microsoft announcement in Wisconsin, a swing state, you might remember. President Biden will travel to Racine County, Wisconsin, on Wednesday to unveil a three point three billion dollar investment by Microsoft to build a new artificial intelligence data center, according to Biden officials. It's another high profile announcement from the president on how he's helping to create jobs with a private sector investment, but with a twist. He'll be taking a not so subtle shot at Donald Trump in the same location where Trump touted a $10 billion Foxconn facility, which he called the eighth wonder of the world seven years ago. It was scaled back and never fully materialized. OK, so we're again, we're going to play some clips here of President Biden speaking, as well as another clip from the Fox Propaganda Network, where again, they note that Biden is trolling Trump and also commenting on Trump's abject failure in this respect. But speaking of the contrast between President Biden's objective successes and Donald Trump's objective failures, the Biden campaign dropped this advertisement. If I'm elected, you won't lose one plant. You'll have plants coming into this country. You're going to have jobs again. You won't lose one plant. I promise you that. The $10 billion Foxconn investment in an LCD plant in Racine County that never arrived. That land remains mostly empty. Those jobs have left Ohio. They're all coming back. They're all coming back. A large American factory stopped production today after more than half a century. And it goes on like that with a few more examples, just again showing that Donald Trump failed abjectly in his promise. And again, by every objective measure, President Biden has succeeded. So we're going to play a couple of clips from Biden touting this announcement. And again, note the aggressive rhetoric. Note uh, he makes some really funny comments about Donald Trump and some MAGA Republicans. And again, I love this rhetoric. I love this aggression. I love this uh, posture from President Biden and the Democrats. We have to start taking the rhetorical fight to the Republicans, and I'm glad we're seeing some of this. When my predecessor came to Racine with the promise of, quote, reclaiming our country's proud manufacturing legacy. Well, we had infrastructure day every, every week, every week for four years, didn't build a damn thing. <laughs> he and the administration promised a $10 billion investment by Foxconn to build new manufacturing complex, create 13,000 new jobs. In fact, he came here with your senator, Ron Johnson, literally holding a golden shovel, promising to build the eighth wonder of the world. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look what happened. They dug a hole with those golden shovels, and then they fell into it. <laughs> Look, they didn't shovel other dirt. They did shovel some dirt. 100 homes were, bo were bulldozed. They wasted hundreds of millions of dollars, your state and local tax dollars, to promise a project that never happened. But Biden delivered. Again, we'll play a couple more clips as well, which further just emphasize the vast objective gulf when it comes to job creation between 
the, the two candidates in question, as well as their record on manufacturing. 83,500 total jobs left Wisconsin during my predecessor's term. But that's not on my watch. We're determined to turn it around. Thus far, since we've come to office, we've created, and with the governor's and overwhelming leadership, we've created over 178,000 jobs in Wisconsin. We're going to create more here in Racine, and big time. So, I remind you again, Wisconsin's a battleground state. Ron Johnson, a MAGA Republican who is as deranged as it gets. He's one of the senators. Tammy Baldwin, a Democrat, um, is uh, seeking re-election this year. We have to take that. We have to defend Tammy Baldwin's seat because right now we have no margin for error. MAGA Republicans only need to flip two seats in the United States Senate and they'll control the Senate. And that would be disastrous for this country. So good on Biden for doing this. One more clip from him. Today... It's another example of the private sector optimism. Microsoft, as the president already pointed out, is investing $3.3 billion to build a new data center here in Racine. That's going to help operate one of the most powerful artificial intelligence systems in the world. And I've gone around the world, literally, not figuratively, meeting with the leading architects of AI. It's going to result in 2,300 union construction jobs just to build a new facility. And 2,000 permanent workers to work in the data centers. In addition, we're also providing a pipeline to train these for new, these new jobs. A pipeline that starts right here at this very spot. Again, great stuff from the president touting his record. And by the way, before I play this Fox clip, I do want to point out we really need to tout the record. So this was a recent poll. It says many voters credit Trump, not Biden, for more on infrastructure. Percentage of voters who say Biden or Trump, quote, has done more to promote infrastructure improvements and job creation. Now, more people than not credit Biden, but it's only 40 to 37 percent with, you know, 12 on either side of both have done about the same or don't know. So there's a 20, there's 24 percent there that we really have to win back. We have to educate them that actually, no, they have both not done about the same. Biden is just objectively much better. And we need to educate these people. We need to win that 24 the 37% seem to be mostly uh, Republicans and right-leaning moderates. But folks, this is disastrous, right? Especially when the record is so clear, and it is clear, okay? Facts don't speak for themselves. This is what I put on Twitter. Ooh, facts don't speak for themselves, folks. Perhaps boasting about accomplishments the way Trump did won't work for Democrats. But how about we give it a proverbial good college try? Because I know some people say it's tacky, given that there's still economic hardship in this country, given that there's still poverty in this country, given that there's people still dying of medical issues in this country, in the wealthiest, and most powerful country in the history of civilization, that it would be seen as insensitive and tacky to boast about our accomplishments. And that may very well be, okay? But this is how I look at it. If we're trying to motivate people to vote, then we probably not only need to tell them what we want to do for them. So like if I'm a candidate, right, and I'm looking for your vote, I would not only want to tell you, hey, this is what I want to do the next time, the next term. Here's my, here are my aspirations. But in order to motivate you to vote, I would probably also need to tell you the stuff I already did for you when you voted for me the first time, right? Doesn't that make sense? I have to imagine most people don't want to feel that their previous vote had been wasted. Like, yeah, sure, definitely. Maybe even spend 60, 70 percent on what you're going to do for me in the next term. But maybe you should spend 30 percent of your time, effort and energy reminding me of how my previous vote for you was actually well budgeted, you know, well invested. Maybe that's how I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I want to play one more clip from Fox News uh, in which, again, they note that President Biden is trolling Trump. And again, they publicly comment on Trump's failure in comparison. And it's just it's glorious. And remind them, I mean, he was in Wisconsin today at the site uh, in 2018 where Trump planned for the, the Foxconn facility, which was going to bring a bunch of jobs to the area. Uh, Biden hosted his event today announcing a, a semiconductor or an AI facility with Microsoft there. So n not an accident to hold it in the same spot where, you know, Trump failed to bring that to fruition. Is, right. is that what he's left with to, to just troll Trump? 
well, you control Trump again with the facts. Like they sent Jess Jackie, um, Jackie Heinrich, I believe, who, again, is one of the, the more sane elements on the Fox propaganda network. Right. She's, I believe, a White House correspondent. She's constantly in the press room. Um, I don't know if it's fair to say, oh, he's is that all he's left with to just troll Trump? That's part of it. And it's OK to troll Trump because Trump tries to troll his political opponents. It's OK for us to do to you what you all try to do to us. But also he's trolling Trump on substance. He's not just insulting Trump. He's also uh, demonstrating his objective superiority with respect to governments. He is talking about a success, one of the many successes, on a specific point where Trump failed. It's like the infrastructure law in general. Trump promised to create a bipartisan infrastructure bill or just an infrastructure bill, period. He promised infrastructure week for years, and he failed. And Biden got it done in one year. That is, that is about as clear of a point of comparison that you can possibly have in a world where you very rarely don't get to make an apples to apples comparison. That is an apples to apples comparison. And Biden wins. Trump loses. Sorry. Those are the facts. And if we get to troll you at the same time with the facts, with the substance, I think that that's, that's just the best way to go about this. So good on President Biden for doing this. Good on him for thinking outside the box, getting creative, taking the fight to Donald Trump and sticking it to MAGA as well he should and proving that, again, when it comes to the facts, when it comes to the substance, when it comes to the record, when it comes to the policy, the Biden administration is just objectively better on all fronts. The, ta- the challenge now is for Biden and the Democrats and you and I, every single one of us, to remind ourselves and others of that fact because facts do not speak for themselves. Let me know what you think in the comments.